to start out, I graduated from the Rossville High School in uh, 1936. And uh, I, I was out, this was the end, the, becoming the end of the Depression, and I was out for a year before I started at Purdue. And during that year, I worked as a maid at the home of Dean Popper, the Dean of Engineering. How interesting. Yeah, well, it was an interesting experience, and I was very happy to have it. Mrs. Potter was a graduate of Kansas State in home economics, and uh, believe me, I was taught exactly how to do everything as far as domestic housework is concerned. <laughs> I always said that Mrs. Potter never had anything that did wanted anything done the easy way if there was a harder way to do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, I, I was, and that was probably why I took home economics. But uh, the Potters were a lovely family, and it was a, a, a nice experience for that year. And then at the end of the year, Mother decided that things were g getting better economically. And so uh, she moved the family from Pyramont, which was uh, about seven miles from Rossville, where I went to high school, to West Lafayette, so that I could go to per could go to Purdue and live at home. And I often think now, when I see about the uh, how terribly, terribly expensive it is for children to go to college now. And I realized that uh, a smaller percentage went to college than that do, they do now. But I don't have any feeling that my uh, expenses for going to college were any great sacrifice on the part of my parents. They, uh, uh, we, I lived at home, and I did work, of course, a little here and there. But when I see now the terrible uh, amount, amounts that cost for children to go to college, I don't have that feeling at all at that time in 1940. But anyway, I uh, went to uh, into Purdue in home economics because there wasn't really much for women uh, for women at Purdue. And we had the choice, I think, of science, and I don't really know what the girls in science were trying, and uh, ed education, and I didn't want to teach. So home economics seemed to be the best idea. And as I said, Mrs. Potter had tra taught me well, so I thought that institution management with the major in foods was the, the best choice. And about that time, Purdue, I think, was six or seven thousand, and there were five men, uh, five men to every girl. <laughs> and, uh, and I think now about Purdue as a, an institution, it was one of the three top uh, engineering schools in the country, MIT and uh, Caltech were the other two. And I think Purdue, I'm not sure, but I think Purdue was the largest engineering school in the country. I believe it was when oh, Dean Potter was there. Yes, when Dean Potter was there, I think it was. And uh, trying to think what else to tell about Purdue. Well, maybe uh, I'd like to ask you, were you born in Rossville? Uh, I, uh, as, as the, uh, the family lived in uh, Paramount, uh, and uh, we were bused in high school to Rossville. And, and uh, uh, as I said, at, at the time then, in, when the Depression was ending, my mother decided that it was time to get out of the rural area, and we could, I could live at home and go to to Purdue, and I had two sisters, and I had a sister coming on in two years, so she realized that there was going to be that need. 
what order were you in the in the order? I, of I was the oldest. Okay. What were your parents' names? Uh, Mar uh, Margaret Grace and Walter Overy. And did you choose Purdue mainly because it was close by? Oh yes, very definitely. That that would have been the only choice I had. Had I had the choice that I would have liked, I would have gone to Indiana. But uh, I, uh, I wasn't, I suppose, terribly enthusiastic about home economics, but it was really the only choice I had. I didn't want to teach. <laughs> and I was not good in, in science. I always felt that, and I think that my background in science in high school was not particularly good because I always felt that, I, uh, that science was difficult for me. However, I don't think I would have ever been a particularly particularly good in science. Did they require you to take any science courses? Oh, yes. And oh, that was what I was going to say. Home economics at that time, I felt that I certainly got an extremely good education in home economics. We had two in institution management. We had two years of chemistry, a semester at least of physics, a semester of economics, and of course, all the uh, the, the uh, food chemi the food chem chemistry and that kind of thing that we got in institution management, and we had the uh, uh, the, uh, the things that we could choose as far as uh, the uh, as, as far as any other choice we had. We had a good many uh, things that we uh, we could choose besides. Those, but it seems to me that it was an extremely well-rounded, very good education for girls in home economics. And when I think of home economics, when people say home economics is cooking and sewing, well, I think of those four, two years of chemistry <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the physics and the economics. <laughs> so. Were there any men in the, in the home economics? Uh, the, I think that there were two or three men in home economics. And uh, at that time, there may have been a girl or so in engineering. And I rather think there might have been a girl or so in agriculture. But I often think, too, about Purdue at that time, and that is as far as the, in the state of Indiana, Purdue would have been noted as an agricultural college. It, uh, nationally, it was an engineering school. But as far as, at least certainly in rural engineer, uh, rural Indiana, it was a, the, uh, Purdue was the engineering school, an extremely good one, of course. Uh, not the engineering school, the agricultural school. Well, I looked you up in the 1941 yearbook, <laughs> and I saw that you were a member of the Orchestus organization. Oh, uh, that I think was, that was... Um, I think that was modern dance. It had something to do with uh, uh, it had something to do with physical ed. Oh, okay. And I I think it, it was modern dance or something like that. Did any of your professors at Purdue stick out in your mind today? Uh, well, I, the, uh, the home economics people were good, <laughs> the best way of putting it. I, uh, when I went to, we lived at the, with, the, was with the Dean Potter, Dean Matthews was, was across the street. And uh, so, uh, uh, I knew Dean Matthews, she, and she and the Potters were very good friends. And I knew Dean Matthews before I ever uh, went to, uh, in, into Purdue. And I suppose that she is the one I remember the, the most. But uh, uh, I, uh, I don't remember any of them that I didn't think was good. <laughs> what about Dorothy Stratton? Did you know her when you were at uh, She was the dean of, um, no, but uh, Irene Pelt. Okay. was the one that I that I remember and I don't remember anything particular about her except that occasionally I think I did consult her about something 
But I, I don't remember Dean, knowing Dean Stratton particularly at all. Well, Dr. Lillian Gilbreth came about that time, and she was a very good friend of the Potters. And uh, I also knew Dr. Gilbreth, and I think that she, uh, we were very interested in her. She was, of course, a woman, an engineer, but she and Dean Matthews and the Potters were all good friends. And so she used to talk to us, uh, the home economists, quite often. And we always wanted her to bring one and bring some of her children with her when she came. We would love to have seen some of those children, and she usually did not. Although I remember once that she did bring a boy and a girl. I think one of the younger, two of the younger ones, and they stayed at the Potters for a night or so. And I remember them as being very nice children, very, very pleasant. But I can remember how we were always asking Dr. Gilbert, why don't you bring your children? <laughs> well, I think one of her children went to Purdue, one of the boys. Uh, I don't know. Possibly it would have been after my time. Possibly so. But, uh, well, what, were, what was Dean Potter like in his home life? Dean Potter was a, a delightful man. I was very fond of both of the Potters. And we always had some contact with them until we left. I think that uh, I only worked for them for a year before I started at Purdue, but I think that maybe in the summer or sometime, that I, I, because I seem to remember knowing them for a longer time than just that year, so I think maybe in the summer, possibly when their regular maid went on vacation, I, I filled in or something of that kind, because, uh, and my husband knew Dean Potter, because Dean Potter was very much aware of all the research work that was going on, and uh, so he was, I remember, was interested in my husband's research, and so he knew him also. But he was a charming man, I think you would say, a, a very delightful person. He, uh, uh, as you probably know, was, was European. He and had quite, quite an accent, I think probably a German accent, because I know he spoke German, and uh, was uh, uh, usually a soft-spoken man. But uh, it was said that if anything d uh, did not suit Dean Potter, he did not hesitate to make his uh, wishes known. <laughs> <laughs> Were you friends with his daughter at all? I knew, knew yes. Helen uh, uh, was at that time, I think, doing her doctorate at, uh, I believe, uh, Johns Hopkins, I think. And she did, I think, come back later and was on the faculty at the uh, uh, home ec faculty, was she not? But that was after my time, and that's so all I know was. And I think probably after her mother died. But, uh, and Mrs. Potter, as I said, was a, a graduate in home economics from Kansas State. That's where Dean Potter was before he came to Purdue. And uh, uh, she was a, a very lovely lady. And I think her whole life was devoted to promoting, I suppose you would say, her husband. And they did a great deal of entertaining, but the entertaining was always the, uh, people that were, uh, in one way or the other, associated with, with Purdue. The, the, uh, head, the uh, uh, heads of the engineering schools and the deans of the schools and uh, uh, when the the uh, board of trustees met, why we could always be sure there would be a dinner party at the Potters. <laughs> and, uh, well, but, I know you said that you lived at home while you, but you never stayed on campus. In any no, home. no, I always lived at home. You were also a member of the Virginia C. Meredith. That was the Home Economics Women. Okay. That Virginia C. Meredith Club was the Home Economics Women. And they, it sounded 
sounded like I was reading a description of it, and it sounded like they specialized in three areas: hobbies, etiquette, and personalization. I that I don't remember. <laughs> All I remember was uh, and, uh, Virginia C. Meredith was the first lady, you know, who was the dean, who was on the board of trustees at Purdue, and she was the the uh, aunt of Dean Meredith and lived with her for many years across the street from the Potters. But I did not know, I knew Dean Meredith, but I did not know Mrs., uh, or Dean Matthews, but I did not know Mrs. Meredith because she died while I was at the Potters. And I remember they were very concerned about her rather lengthy illness and her death. But I, I never knew her, but she was a, a very good friend of the Potters also. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. yeah. Mrs. Virginia Claypool Meredith. Yes, yeah, she sounded very interesting. They said she was a very, a very interesting woman, and as I said, a good potter, a good friend of the potters. But I, I never met her because she was ill and died while I was at the, working with the potters. Well, it sounded like the Virginia Meredith Club No, that must have been after my time. I don't remember that at all. Um, I also saw that you were a member of the Women's Athletic Association. Were there particular sports? I don't remember. I'm not sport-minded. I don't remember why I would have been. It must have been something, but I, I don't recall. I don't recall what. I'm not athletically minded at all. But there must have been something that I had some interest in. What about um, any social events like the, the teas or the dances or the balls? Do you remember? Oh, uh, we went to the, what was it, the Saturday night mixer. For, there were the Saturday night mixer, and my husband and I went to them during the time that we were together. And it was, they were always fun. And I remember the junior proms quite well because we went to them also, and uh, some very well-known, very good bands came down from Chicago to play at the Junior Proms. So I and some of the, the well-known bands of that time, I remember dancing to. <laughs> Did you meet your husband while you were both students? My husband was a year behind me, and uh, yes, I, I met him, and he, he had, was had a rather an, an interesting uh, um, life uh, at Purdue. He was uh, reared on a cattle ranch in Wyoming. And uh, he, uh, his father had no intention that he would be anything but that he would take over the cattle ranch when father retired. And my husband detested cattle. <laughs> <laughs> He went very, but his mother was a, a, probably a better educated woman than his father. And she decided that if he wanted out of that, why well, she was going to see to it that he got it. And I think the only way that he ever got to Purdue was, was that uh, his mother was determined if he wanted to study engineering, that he, he should study it. So she, uh, he, it was much... Uh, much against his father's wishes, uh, he decided that he would go to Purdue. He thought a bit about uh, Caltech, I think, but he decided, like me, that his science background in high school was not terribly good and that he thought Purdue would be better as far as, uh, uh, as uh, his science was concerned. He, that he, that they did not expect as much from their freshmen as Caltech did. So he decided on Purdue. So finally his father said, well, if you ride the cattle cars to Chicago and sell the cattle, why then you can go down to Lafayette. We will sell the cattle in Chicago rather than in Denver. And so he rode the cattle cars to Chicago, sold the cattle, sent the check home, got on the bus and, and got, got off of the bus in Lafayette and said, which way is Purdue, and started walking. And I don't think he ever really went back. <laughs> he loved it. <laughs> he couldn't escape that last ride with the cattle. <laughs> he had to 
that is the way that he got there was, and I don't remember whether later he had to ride the cattle cars to Chicago or not, but I know the first time he, he went, uh, he, that was the way he got there. But of course, we were always friendly with his, with his parents and went and visited them, but I don't think his father never got, ever got over the fact that he was an engineer instead of a cattleman. And uh, didn't understand why, with that ranch just sitting there waiting for him, he couldn't <laughs> he couldn't take it over. <laughs> Three sisters, and none of them had any interest in it either. <laughs> what about if it said in the yearbook that you were also involved with the YWCA? Do you remember? Anything? Don't remember anything particular about it. I probably, I probably lost it. No, I don't remember. I don't remember the YW. I don't remember those activities at all. I presume I went to them, but I don't remember anything particular about any of them. What about the home at cafeteria? Did you ever, were you ever in oh, I, we, uh, the, the in institution management uh, girls definitely worked in the home at cafeteria. We worked behind the counter there, and that was part of our course in institution management. We. I don't remember how many semesters, but uh, we always worked in the home at cafeteria. But after I got out for a very short time, after I graduated for a very short time, I worked in a restaurant in uh, Chicago I, and uh, decided that food service was not what I wanted to do. I, hadn't, I didn't care at all for it and uh, never did anything in food service after that. Did you, after graduation, did you go into any sort of work outside of the home? Uh, well, I, uh, I, was, I was married in December, no, I was married in 1943. My husband was a year behind me. I graduated in 41, he, did, he graduated in 42 December. And we were married in August, I believe, of 43, and, uh, uh, he went, uh, in December, he went directly from graduation to the Army. And I was married in, in uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, with two Army men as uh, the, uh, the uh, who were uh, the only two uh, people that were with us were two Army officers who were with us. Uh, uh, but, uh, I was determined that I was going to be married in a church, so I was married in the Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. And for almost a year, I followed my husband across the country, across the South, uh, from one army post to another, until uh, he was in this country longer than a great many servicemen were, until he uh, was shipped out in the Pacific Theater. And then I went home and uh, went to uh, work at the Purdue Library. <laughs> oh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, I, I loved library work. And uh, had I uh, had the opportunity, I would have done as my two sisters did, who both had degrees in library science. But I worked in the order department. I was very fond of the work. And the way my sister Teddy got into library work was, was one day... Uh, Mr. Wilson, the circulation librarian, came into the audit room and said, I'm desperate for people at the counter. Do any of you have any relatives, legitimate or illegitimate, or for any friends who would be interested in working at the circulation desk? And I thought for a minute and I said, yes, I think I have. <laughs> that was Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already talked a little bit about how the, the men really outnumbered the women mm -hmm. at Purdue. Can you tell me a little bit about how the women students were treated by the men students? Oh, we were well treated. <laughs> <laughs>
and some of the town girls, I think, probably did, but it was not, uh, it was not easy for the men to find a girlfriend. Oh, yes. I expected when I graduated that I would go into food service. And that was why I worked in the, the uh, restaurant in Chicago for that time. But I did not care for it, and I decided that food service was not what I wanted as a career. And I would have probably uh, had various circumstances not to change the situation. Would have probably done as my two sisters did and got the degree in library science. But uh, I was uh, married at the time, and always, for some reason or other, we were moving. <laughs> and it is, ASU, I would have, did not have it. I would have had, living here, I would have had to gone to Tucson to get the degree. And so, uh, actually, uh, later, when my son was in college here, uh, I did my master's again in home economics, <laughs> because I just thought, oh, it would be fun to go back. <laughs> back to school and uh, do, uh, yes, I have a master's uh, in uh, human uh, fam family relations from ASU, and my son was in ASU at the same time. What year did you get that? Uh-oh, unexpected question. <laughs> uh, no, I am trying to, I think... It was about 78, I think, but I am not really quite sure. But I was going to go to work, and then my husband got a job down the West Coast, and we moved. And just about the time I was getting out and would have started looking for a job, we went to the West Coast. So always something seemed to happen that I never could be in the right place at the right time to do the library degree. <laughs> Well, um, what about, did you have to go through any sort of orientation when you first entered the university, like a freshman orientation? Well, I think there was some, time, uh, some sort of, uh, uh, I remember Dean Stratton talking to us, uh, to the, uh, uh, the girls, but uh, nothing that I have any particular remembrance about, but I think that Dean, I do remember Dean Stratton doing something, I think, about orientation. Uh, an introduction. An introduction to the university, yes. Um, well, tell me a little bit about how the war, the, the, the war, World War II, affected life on campus. Well, I think more about it after the, the, uh, they began coming back. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> The, but uh, uh, as I said, Mr. Wilson uh, was desperate for help, and so, and, uh, so there, there was always, uh, I think, uh, some shortage of, of help at that, at that time uh, on the campus. And uh, of course, uh, there, the, men, the men were gone. <laughs> but uh, I. Uh, Everybody worked. That, I think, is the thing that I think about World War II the most. Was that everyone who, who could, uh, was able-bodied at all worked. Both my parents worked, my sisters worked, I worked. But uh, I th think more, more about it when my husband came back to do his, uh, his doctorate. And... Uh, the, uh, the the veterans were returning then, and uh, there was, uh, of course, the, the uh, married men, uh, married men with children. And that was something, of course, that when I started in, we did not have to, to deal with it at all. And housing was quite a problem then. And I can recall that, uh, uh, as it happened, uh, we uh, had a very nice apartment in my husband and my uh, uh, parents' home. Uh, they had, had the downstairs and we had the upstairs, so we lived very comfortably during the time my husband did his doctorate, and I think of it as being a very pleasant time. I was working at the library quite happily, and he was doing his research quite happily, and so it, uh, his, uh, during the period that he, we were there, the four 
for years that it took to do his doctorate. We, we look back look back on it, I think, very, very pleasantly. But many of the women, I remembered, were not happy about it, because mainly because they had young children and, and poor, and the housing was not good. What's your fondest memory of your time at Purdue? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't really know. I, um, the four years that I was in school there, I remember very positively that uh, it, was a, it was a pleasant time. I don't know anything particularly that I have any special memories of it. Any, any memory that just stands out in your mind? No, I think not. As I said, I just, uh, it, was, it was pleasant. And, uh, Class being involved in anything in particular? No, the, the uh, uh, Saturday night mixers, I think, were the thing that, uh, that I remember. We always went to the dance on Saturday night. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> That's plenty of dance partners. Yeah. <laughs> what about the, the Purdue chords? Were they doing math then? Were they, were they right on the chords? Oh, yes, yes. There were the, the senior chords. Yes, that was oh, one of the traditions. I remember my, uh, my husband, uh, when he was a senior, had the cards. Looking back on your life, would you change anything? Uh, the only thing I, that I would change would be I would wish that I had been able to have uh, work, and got the degree in library science and worked at it. But it would always seem to be something that uh, came up. My husband was changing a job, or we, uh, or, uh, I was not in a place where it was, uh, where, as I said, uh, there was never a school near that I, I could get the degree. I would have had to go to Tucson here. What's your proudest achievement in your life? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> don't have any feeling that. <laughs> <laughs> I never had but the one child. If you could, if you could leave a message for Purdue students today, what would it be? Well, I think that it's fortunate that women there have so much more choice. Because, as I said, the, the, our choice was so limited when I w was there. And now... Uh, I have a niece, Mike's wife, Judy, has a degree in physics from Purdue. What do you remember about your husband's work? I know he was obviously very well accomplished, but um, you said that he was doing research while you were working in the library. Yes, that was after he got out of the service. He came back, and uh, he uh, he was uh, with the Army. He was in the service quite a long time because he was with the Army of Occupation in, o in Okinawa. And he came back and he said that he was completely incapable of um, going into a job in engineering. And he never went into the details about it, and I didn't ask. And, uh, but, uh, he, uh, and so uh, uh, the mother said, well, you had uh, better go back and uh, do a doctorate. And uh, he said, well, I'm not smart enough to do a doctorate. And Mother said, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> he and Mother were always quite close. He had lost his mother. And they were quite close, and I think he decided that he wouldn't dare to defy Mother, <laughs> and so he better do the doctorate. So he skipped the master's and went straight through for the doctorate, which made a difference because I think of the, the research work, I believe, uh, makes a difference if you skip the master's. Uh, he, he, his doctor was 1950. Okay. And we went from there to Oak Ridge, and Oak Ridge was in interesting, but we were only there for two years. And I have no idea what he did in Oak Ridge. They were not talking about it even then, <laughs> that long after the war. But he, the offer came through from Motorola. They were starting a research uh, program here. 
And I, we thought, well, he was a Westerner, and maybe he might be happier rather than in the Midwest or the South to come west. And that, I think, was definitely a factor in, in coming west. Oh, yes, uh, I worked for Eleanor Kamak, who was a very nice lady, and Mary Jane Carr, maybe you know her. You know Mary Jane Carr? She lived at, uh, she lives at Westminster with my sister, was there, and uh, Frances Wilson, a uh, male, was uh, the circulation librarian, who uh, was nice, and I thought very highly of Mr. Moriarty. Uh, Professor Hepburn had just left retired about the time I came, and Professor Hepburn was a very dear, very sweet, elderly gentleman, but not, I think, uh, dynamic enough to do the things which definitely needed to be done. And when Mr. Moriarty came, he was much more the, uh, what would you say, dynamic type, and uh, I found him, and I think most of us did, found him very good to work for. He was very, very good, but uh, he he was, I think, definitely what the library needed at that, at that time. And, uh, was there just one library on campus? No, but I'm trying to think. They started the departmental library is, libraries, but I'm trying to think. I think pharmacy had one, a uh, departmental library. There are about 13 now, so I yes. how many. Well, I'm not sure how many, but I would think maybe, I believe mechanical engineering had one and pharmacy had one, and I'm not sure about the others. Agriculture, I think, had some. But I'm, I'm not, but the, the department libraries were much, opened up uh, much after I came, after Mr. Moriarty came. Well, is there anything else that you have in mind for Kansas to talk about? Mm, nothing that I think of. Is there anything what you want to ask me? No, uh, my sister, Teddy, uh, went into circulation, and uh, Teddy had uh, had uh, a divorce with a two-year-old child, and she had dropped out of school with the uh, Purdue. She went one year and dropped out at the age of 18 and had a child and uh, a divorce and came back to live with my parents. And at the time she went to uh, work at the library, she uh, was, uh, went, went to work the desk and uh, had to go back and, and get her degree. And so she uh, had to finish three years bachelor's. And she sort of did it and worked at the same time, part time, and then went to Illinois to do her library science. But, Yes, it was very good. She always thinks she thought very highly. And then she came back with her, her degree and went to pharmacy at once. And she knew that she was going there when, when she came back. So did, did either of your, your sisters know that they would go into library science? My uh, sister Virginia, who is deceased, Mike's mother, um, uh, decided to go into library science at uh, the, uh, uh, I think, I believe her, her, some of her children were in college. Uh, no, well, I, 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 think, I think her oldest son was in college at that time. And she had dropped out to get married at, after two years. And so she had to go back <laughs> and finish and do her, and, and she did her, uh, her, um, uh, library science in Indianapolis. That would have been uh, that would have been uh, Indiana. That's where she did. But no, that was a, a 
middle age, with her, it was a middle-aged thing. But as far as her going, I think that the reason she went, I always thought the reason she went into library science was that uh, because Teddy and I had worked in libraries, and, <laughs> but, uh, and we always said, Virginia, we didn't even know that you knew what a book was. <laughs> I worked in the, the uh, uh, art order department, and we just checked in books, and, okay. uh, ordered them and checked them in. Okay. And then they went on to cataloging. How big was that department then? Oh, I think there were three or four of us. Okay. Uh -huh. The library has grown so much. Yes, I think, <laughs> I, yes, I think there were three or four of us, as I recall. Eleanor Kamak was the order librarian, and she was very nice. I uh, yeah. thought uh, the library was a nice place to work. <laughs> I have very positive feelings about it. It's about all the people that I worked with there. Good. Well, that's really all I Well, you might want to get uh, on tape about their family home. My, my son oh. told me about it. Oh, uh -huh. it's sort of, it's sort of a, you know, part of cancer. Uh, well, uh, we li lived at the... Uh, and that was where I lived when I, when I, and when uh, I came back from, from the, my husband was in the service. And it was on 152 Seat Street, which was um, oh, just a block from the campus. And there were all the houses along there. I think probably everyone realized that lived there that ultimately the university was going to uh, take over that area. And I think my parents accepted that ultimately that, that would be what happened. But the house we lived in was quite a beautiful uh, white house with uh, green shutters, a big house. And uh, as I said, there was a, an apartment upstairs, and my parents lived downstairs. And, uh, but it was the oldest, I believe, the oldest uh, house in West Lafayette. It was a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you have, I think Mike probably had, yes, I have. And, uh, and now I think that it would have been a historical, it would have been registered as a historical house and probably could not have been destroyed. But I think now I believe it's a parking lot, is it? I'm not sure. <laughs> Was it at the corner? Of it, uh, almost the corner of wood. Uh, sheets and wood. It was not quite the corner. I thought it was for the South Alumni Center. Oh. I'm not, not quite sure, but anyway, there's a parking lot along there someplace. Uh -huh. Do you remember when, it, what year it was that Purdue took it, that property over? Um, no, not exactly. Okay. Uh -huh. I was just curious, did they offer, did they offer to purchase it? Oh, yes, they purchased from my parents, and it was purchased at a, at a, a, a reasonable, the, the purchase price was a reasonable one. We had no complaints about that. As I said, my parents, I think, always realized that that was rather inevitable. And uh, so that, when, and they simply bought another house in, in, uh, on Oak Street, I believe, when they moved. I don't, and I think it, I, when I think about it, it's quite surprising. I have not really been in West Lafayette for 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, 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 go back. I, we always went back to see family, and usually in the, the summer. But as far as going back for any length of time, I have not gone back to Lafayette for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Just go back and we just with business and all that, but not. And my sister would you know, call me up and say, do you remember this and that? And I think, not, not really after 50 years. So she still lives at West Lafayette? Yes, she's at Miss Did you ever get to see her? Oh, yes. I go back every summer oh, okay. to see her. And I have a, a, a niece and nephew, and Virginia's son lives in South Bend. So we do go back. But it's... Uh, I don't know when I have walked on the campus, not for years. Now, my son does, and he usually, and he and his cousins usually 
uh, go out and, uh, and see what's going on in the campus. And I was rather, um, he uh, um, one summer didn't know what to do, so he and Mike decided that they'd go to summer school at Purdue. So they, uh, I don't think, don't remember how many hours they took, but uh, they uh, signed up for summer school. Uh, not too demanding of courses, I think. And Ed always has very fond memories of that summer at Purdue. He thought the courses were well taught. He, uh, he, he, he liked Purdue. But I think that he felt that he preferred to go to a Western a school in the West rather than go to the Midwest. I think that, was it, that he felt more at home in the, the, the West. He did go to uh, Southern Cal for a year and a half and uh, just, just did not like, well, I think he did not like the environment in Los Angeles was his main objection to Southern Cal and came back and graduated from ASU. But he's never done an advanced degree. Uh, he thinks journalism doesn't require an advanced degree. Uh, uh, one of the editors of the business section of uh, the Tribune newspapers, and the Tribune newspapers are the newspapers in what is known as the uh, e the East Valley, and that's Mesa and Tempe and Scottsdale and some of the smaller areas, and they, uh, they cover that area. And they're smaller, of course, than the Arizona Republic, which covers the entire area.